Welcome, dear learner of Conduct Center Services, NC2. Today, we will tackle about the probing skills. One of the worst things a customer service representative could do is to resolve an issue without knowing and fully understanding the customer's concern. It takes not just a question, but a series of questions to fully understand where the customers are coming from. It is important then to dig deep into the customer's concerns to get to the root of the issue. Probing questions are intended to help the presenter think more deeply about the issue at hand. If probing question does not have that effect, it is either clarifying question or a recommendation with an upward inflection at the end. Here are some suggestions to help you formulate good probing questions. Number one, make the probing question brief. Number two, facilitate thinking from reaction to reflection. And number three, allow multiple responses. Number four, do not place the blame on anyone. Number five, Avoid yes or no questions. Number six, make it brief. Seven, encourage taking another party's perspective. Number eight, require the person to solve his or her own problem. Number nine, elicit a slow response. And number ten, make it general and widely useful. Here are examples of probing questions. How do you think your own comfort with the material has influenced your choice of product? What makes you say that, madam or sir? What do you think is quality work? What would students say about this issue? Why did allowing students to create their own study questions cause a problem to you? Quotes, on the other hand, refers to the following. Exact phrases, direct passage of a sentence or more, and quotation marks are needed as well as the parenthetical documentation or in-text citation. Paraphrasing Paraphrasing is your own version of what the customer told you. It is an effective way of checking if you and the customer are on the same page. It assures the customer that you listen to their concerns and have understood them. To paraphrase effectively, take note of the following. Reread or listen to the original passage or statement until you understand its full meaning. Probe if necessary and if possible to fully grasp the meaning of the original passage or statement. Record or develop your paraphrased message or idea. Repeat paraphrased idea to your customer to check if your understanding of his or her idea is correct. Use quotation marks when writing to identify any term or phrase you have borrowed exactly from the source. Here are paraphrasing examples. If customer says, I want my account canceled because I cannot pay my monthly fee. Proper paraphrasing is, If I understood you correctly, Mrs. Wilson, you want to cancel your subscriptions because you are having difficulties in coping with the monthly fees. Is that correct? And improper paraphrasing is, So you want to cancel your account because you can't pay the fee? You see the difference between proper and improper paraphrasing. Second is summarizing. Summarizing is also an important factor to master in this field. Summarizing is taking the main idea from a source. It often focuses on several paragraphs or an entire article. This need parenthetical documentation or in-text citation of source. Here is another way to compare paraphrasing and summarizing. If you watched a TV program and you came to school telling your friends about what happened during the episode, you would be summarizing. But if you watched the same program last night and you told your friends about a specific scene, you would be paraphrasing. 
what would these two have in common? You would still need to credit your source, such as the TV program, by including parenthetical documentation or in-text citations with a complete work cited page. Clarifying is the last one. Clarifying lets you address the customer's practical needs immediately. Here are simple ways on how to clarify the customer's inquiries or concerns. Number one, clarify the customer's single and easy to understand inquiry by explaining a piece of information about it. Sample call. This is Alex Hanks and I'd like to know if I could still use the discount coupon I received last night. A sample response from the agent would be, Alex? I believe you are referring to the summer promo discount coupon of our store. Yes, you can still use it. Another way to clarify is paraphrase several concerns as explained by the customer. Customer might say, I received my shoe orders yesterday. It seems like you have problems with your delivery service. Two of my orders are out of shape and the red one has molds. A sample response by the agent would be, Brittany, I apologize for the inconvenience brought about by the situation. I understand where you're coming from. Let me check if I understand you completely. You received two pairs of shoes that are out of shape and one with molds? Last example is clarify further by probing when you do not understand the customer's concerns. If customer will say, Samantha Morrison on the line, I'd like to know if the discount rates of your New York travel package applies next week. And the agent's response would be, I believe you're referring to the New York City 20% discount tour package. Yes, it is still available next week. Clarifying questions are simple questions of fact. They clarify the dilemma and provide the knots and bolts so that the participants can ask good probing questions and provide useful feedback later in the protocol. Clarifying questions are for the representative and should not go beyond the boundaries of the customer's dilemma. They have brief, factual answers and does not provide any new food for thought from the customer service representative.